Hey guys, excuse the mess. This. It's early in the morning, I'm still half asleep, and I just um, got a Facebook notification. Anyways, and another one. Okay, so I feel like since the whole thing has died down, since the shooting here in Aurora, Colorado. I can tell my story. It's not much because the guy, James Holmes, shot up Theater 9 and I was in Theater 8 where some adjacent bullets went into apparently and um, I'll just tell you my quick story. So it's obvious, went to go see The Dark Knight Rises, midnight premiere, I saw the 1201 showing, and Theater 9, I believe, was doing 1205. And Theater 16, which is across the hall from Theater 9, was showing The Dark Knight Rises as well, but I think they said that was a 1215 showing, or 1210, I'm not sure. But, James Holmes... I guess bought a ticket for Theater 9 and went to Theater 9, but I don't know much about that. But I'll tell you what I remember. <sighs> okay, I remember sitting there, and it was probably 22 minutes into the movie, I assume. And it was during a shootout scene, as I'm sure you all know, because people have reported that from Theater 9 is theater 8 as well and I was sitting in the second row not towards the screen but away from the seats in front of the screen but you know the seats like I hope you know what I mean um, I remember sitting there and I, I was so into the movie and then exactly in my row like maybe six seats away towards the aisle or the stairs there was two loud booms and it looked like somebody was playing a prank or people thought it was special effects with the theater promotion and everything I just thought it was fireworks you know because that theater usually doesn't do cheap gimmicks and everything like that so I thought it was fireworks and there was even a lot of smoke and maybe four people or six people I don't know I didn't see but they all ran out I guess to go get help cuz I guess or to complain I thought they were going to complain cuz I thought it was a trick and they were irritated and I remember I looked cuz it was to my right when the explosions happened and I looked to my left and I see like maybe three people run down the stairs and I thought maybe they did it and they're just running to get out and I thought nothing of it, so I continued to watch the movie, and I was like, I was thinking to myself, jerks ruining the movie. And I was getting more into it, and maybe, like, maybe not even a minute passes by. And it wasn't even 30 seconds. And three or four people, like, walk out towards the exit by the screen. And there's, like, two girls and two guys. And the guy yelled to the theater don't go out in the front, there's someone with a gun shooting up the place. You know, I thought it was a prank. So, of course, I ignored it. And the woman next to me, sitting on my right, I didn't know her. And to my left was my friend Jessica. And the woman next to me was asking what was going on, and I was just saying to her, you know, maybe it's a prank. And that's what we thought, and then the fire alarm starts going off. And it starts going really loud, and we can't hear because the movie's loud. I mean, it's the dark night. Of course, it's going to be loud. And this is all within, like, maybe two minutes after the explosion. Maybe a minute and a half. And I remember the lights flashing. It's like, you know, fire drill at school. But it was a lot louder. And there was an announcement with it. But we couldn't hear it because the movie was so loud. And as soon as it got to a quiet scene, we heard... Go to the nearest exit, there's been an emergency reported inside of the building. And there's people leaving towards the exit, the main doors where you walk into the theater. But they were being pushed back. And I remember 
I see them all come back, and I was thinking, why are they coming back in? Maybe they want us to stay in. I thought it was a drill, though. And so, um, my friend and I were walking to the left to exit, but then people stopped. So we walked back to the right, and the chick behind me, well, next to me, she was behind me now, but we turned around, so I was behind her. She said her boyfriend was calling the police, and he said that they were, we were in Theater 8. I heard him. He said, we're in Theater 8, we don't know what's going on, we don't know what to do. And the police said, just get out of there. So we thought we could, and so we walked up the stairs to this exit. There's an exit at the top of the stairs for Theater 8 and 9. And I think theater next to theater 8, which is theater 7. And so we walked up there. And I was probably, like, the 20th person to walk out. And there's, like, all kinds of people at the railing lo looking over the ledge that looks that has an overview of the lobby. And the concession stands and everything. And as soon as I walked out the door, my throat got really dry. And I started coughing. And... It, no, so was my friend and people around me. Then I just said aloud, what do we do? And then he said, do, I guess we just show him our hands. I didn't know what he was talking about at first, and I looked over, and there were two police officers with big rifles, and one of them yelled, John, did you let these people out? And I, I don't know what happened, but there was a woman police officer, and we were standing there, we didn't know what to do. And they looked worried, and I just looked around as they were talking and yelling. There's paper all over the lobby, and popcorn, and, like, advertisement papers, like, fallen from the ticket booth, like somebody had jumped over, and it scared me a little, and I didn't know what was going on. Nobody did. So we were a little freaked out. And I remember her yelling at us, telling us to get out. So we ran down the stairs... And we ran out of there. Didn't think anything of it, but we left right away. We didn't stay. I guess we were supposed to stay, but we were too scared because there was maybe like 10 police cars outside, and we saw two ambulances, and we just kept hearing sirens, and people. we seen people crying and freaking out, and we didn't know what was going on. And to be honest, I wanted to cry right there, but I didn't know what was going on, so I didn't cry. And I had a video recording like everything that happened, but I seen all the media around this and I seen what had happened. And so out of respect, I deleted that video and it's gone forever because I don't want anybody seeing any more insight on that because other people posted their videos on YouTube, which I believe is just a little disrespectful, but... They were there, I guess, but it just I still find it disrespectful because people died, and that's something that shook the nation, and I can't do anything like that because it's, it's not right to me. So I deleted the video, and I had a couple pictures, but I deleted them as well, and I don't have my movie ticket because in the movie, before it started, I was there maybe with my friend for like three hours before the movie started, so we were bored. And I was playing with the ticket inside of the theater, sitting there, and I kept putting it on my lip, and it would just sit there. And I pulled it off, and it ripped my lip open. It usually doesn't do that. And there's blood all over my ticket, and so I left it in the cup holder on my armrest. And my room roommate friend, she still has hers. No, her mom has it now, but she had hers. And then... When I heard what happened, I wanted to cry, but I didn't. I mean, I, I cried on the phone with someone, but that was it. And it traumatized me big time, because knowing that happened next to me, and you all heard, I assume, about the guy that got shot in the neck. He was sitting in the row in front of me, literally, like, right there, one row in front, three seats away from me. And knowing that bullet went through him and could have hit me, it's selfish, but... I worried about myself, but I just, I know he's alright, and I thank God he's alright. I thank God, every, you know, everyone that lived, lived, and, you know, I, my prayers and thoughts go out to the family that lost people, and those people that are traumatized, it's, 
It's something we shouldn't have gone through, but we did. And now I'm scared to even go to the movies. I know nothing really happened to me, but knowing that ju it just happened next door, in the next theater next to me, it scares me. But the next day, because I was freaking out and I wanted something to help me, because I'm, I'm the type that likes to, you know, get therapy done and over with, and I thought maybe if I saw The Dark Knight Rises at another theater, it would be very therapeutic. And so my friend and I, we went to Arkans Theaters, and we went to see it, we watched it. We were agitated at first throughout the beginning because we remembered all those scenes, and then and when it got to the shootout scene that happened during the theater shooting, I'm not good at cameras and I can't see, so sorry. But we watched it and we were a little agitated, but as soon as we got through it, we felt a little bit better. I mean, she's still freaking out about it. But I found it a little relaxing, knowing that I got through the movie without anyone trying to kill me or anything. And it just, it freaks me out. I mean, I still wonder why he did it, but I don't want, you know, all the details. I, I think I just want it to pass. But I thought I would get my story out. Now that the media has calmed down more and it's just focusing more on James Holmes' trial instead of the theater down the street. It's literally down the street from me. And I see the memorial and everything. It's heartbreaking. But it happened. Life is awful. There's awful people in it. And life goes on. We just have to try to forget those things or remember them but not let them ruin us. So, I hope you liked my little story of what happened in Theater 8, Century 16, the morning of July 20th, during the midnight showing of The Dark Knight Rises. Aurora, Colorado. It's different now. Now that the theater's gone. I haven't gone to that theater for years, and it's just awful. Okay. I'm going now. Bye.